Hey everyone, welcome back. Today we're going to read two more chapters of The Canary Caper. It is chapter number six and seven. This is part three of the reading, so if you have not listened to the other chapters, please press stop and go back. Just a little reminder before we get started. Please have a notebook or a piece of paper next to you so you can write down little notes that you may have about your suspects or certain clues. We're getting closer and closer to our suspects and learning who's committing the crimes. So uh, please have that uh, right next to you so you can write down any thoughts you have. And here's a reminder of the elements of mystery. Our detective, the victim or victims, the suspects or suspect, uh, witnesses, alibi, the red herring, evidence, crime, and clues. Last time I did ask you about the detectives and um, I guess the victims. We're gonna go more in depth, but we really can't talk about a lot of this until we've seen the whole thing. But it's good to take notes as you're listening. Once again, we will be reading the chapters 6 and 7 today of the series A to Z Mysteries called The Canary Caper. All right, so before we start this chapter, really quick, let me get you back on to what we're talking about. The chapter 5 ended with them discussing who was committing the robberies and them being scared that, oh my gosh, Miss Davis is going to be next. Okay, so chapter six jumps right into their conversation they were just having at the end of chapter five. Chapter six. Or your house could be next, Dink reminded Ruth Rose. Ruth Rose shook her head. They didn't return Tiger, so they didn't get inside my house. Come on, we have to tell Officer Fallon. They ran down Main Street to the police station. Does he work on Sunday morning? Josh asked as they hurried up the steps. We'll find out in a minute, Dink said. The kids almost bumped into Officer Fallon coming through the door. Were you kids coming to see me? He asked. I was just heading to Ellie's. Officer Fallon, we figured out the burglaries, Ruth Rose cried. He looked at her. Oh, then I better go back inside. Sitting at his desk, Officer Fallon picked up a pencil. I'm listening, he said. Ruth Rose told him their theory about how the pet nappers came back later to return the animals, then rob the houses. Officer Fallon smiled. I think you're right on the button, he said. I figured out the same thing. Did you know that Mrs. Miss Davis's canary was returned too? Ruth Rose asked. She looked at Dink and Josh. We think her house will be robbed next. Officer Fallon raised his eyebrows. Well now, this is news. I didn't know about the canary. When was it returned? He asked, writing something on his pad. Friday night, Josh said. Some guy called and said he'd found Mozart. He brought him over while we were there. Officer Fallon's eyes widen. Tell me about this man, Josh, he said quietly. Josh described Fred Little while Officer Fallon took more notes. Can you arrest Fred Little before he breaks into Miss Davis's house? Ruth Rose asked. Officer Fallon tapped his pencil and squinted one eye at the kids. Officer Keene and I have been looking for whoever returned the Gwen and Pardue pets. We want to question them about the pet nappings and the robberies. Now we will be looking for Fred Little, too. He leaned forward on his elbows. But we have no evidence that these people have done anything wrong. The same goes for Fred Little. True. He returned the canary and got inside Leona Davis's house. That's the same pattern as the other two burglaries, but it's not a crime. 
You can't arrest him? Josh asked. Officer Fallon shook his head. Even if I knew where to find Fred Little, I have no proof that he's planning a crime. But we have to do something, Ruth Rose said. You've already done a lot, Officer Fallon said. I didn't know that Leona Davis got her bird back. You've given me a good lead. Officer Keene and I really appreciate your help, kids. He walked them to the door. Don't worry, we have a few tricks up our sleeves. I still think we should do something, Ruth Rose said when they were outside. Well, Josh said, the circus is leaving tomorrow, and we do have those free tickets Officer Fallon gave us. Ink laughed. Together, he and Josh talked Ruth Rose into visiting the circus for a few hours. They watched a few animal acts and bought popcorn. Ruth Rose didn't feel like going on any rides, so they decided to go into the clown tent again. Two clowns dressed as firefighters were running around, bumping into each other while a small cardboard building burned. Smoke and fl fake flames were shooting out of the windows. A woman clown was screaming, help, save me. Some of the kids in the audience started yelling, save her, mister, up there, save her. Firefighter clowns got tangled up in their own hoses, making everyone laugh and yell even louder. Suddenly, a clown dressed like Superman appeared on stilts. He wore a blue shirt under a red cape. Bright yellow suspenders held up the skinny blue pants that hid his stilts. Superman flapped his cape and snapped his suspenders. Then he marched over to the burning tower and saved the woman. All the kids in the audience yelled and clapped. Dink noticed that Ruth Rose was hardly even looking. He nudged Josh and they left. I'd like to get some stilts. Josh said. He walked stiff-legged and snapped invisible suspenders. Do circuses ever hire kids? Yeah, to feed the tigers, Dink said, which reminded him of Ruth Rose's tiger. He looked at her. Do you want to come over and finish the Monopoly game? She shook her head. Don't you guys want to solve this mystery? Sure, but what else can we do? Dink asked. Officer Fallon said he's going to look for the people who return the pets. Well, I know how we can help him, Ruth Rose said, her eyes flashing. Uh-oh, Josh mumbled. Um, Ruth Rose, I don't think Officer Fallon wants any more help, Dink said. Ruth Rose ignored him. Are you guys sleeping in the tent again tonight? She asked. Dink nodded. I guess so. Why? Ruth Rose grinned mysteriously. I promise to bring over some cookies if you promise to go somewhere with me. Where? Dink asked. And why do you have that sneaky look on your face? Wear dark clothes, Ruth Rose said. We're going to stake out Miss Davis's house. A stakeout, Josh said. Ruth Rose nodded. Like in the cop movies? Dink asked. She nodded again. You think Miss Davis's house is going to get robbed tonight? Josh said. A third nod. And I plan to be there to see who does it. She grinned. Will that be enough proof for Officer Fallon? Suppose a burglar does come, Dink says. What do we do? Tie him up? All right, Josh said. I'll bring the rope. Ruth Rose shook her head. No rope. We just sit and watch. If someone comes, one of us will run to the police station. The other two will stay. If the guy leaves, we follow him. Dink thought that over. 
follow him where? Wherever he goes, Dink. Maybe he'll lead us to where he stashes the stuff he robbed, Ruth Rose said. And maybe that's where he's got Tiger. Well, I guess it'll work, as long as we just watch the guy, Dink said. Ruth Rose nodded. We just wait and watch. And eat cookies, Josh added. Dink and Josh sat in the dark tent waiting for Ruth Rose. It was almost 10 o'clock. Josh wore camouflage pants and a black t-shirt. Dink had on jeans and a dark gray sweatshirt. Where the heck is she? Josh asked. Dink peeked out the tent flap. My folks will kill me if we get caught running around Green Lawn at night. Mine would ground me for 10 years, Josh said. Why do we let her talk us into this? Dink heard a noise. Did you hear something? He whispered. Josh peeked out. Ruth Rose, is that you? Ooh. Ruth Rose giggled. I'm right here, Josh. Dink poked his head out. He couldn't see a thing. Come on, Ruth Rose, stop fooling around. Where are you hiding? I'm not hiding. Suddenly, Dink could see her. Ruth Rose was sitting about four feet away, right in front of them. She was wearing black jeans and a black jacket. Her hair was covered by a ski cap. She'd even blacken her face. Except for the whites of her eyes, Ruth Rose was practically invisible. What's that stuff on your face? Dink asked. Liquid shoe polish. She pulled a bottle out of her backpack. Here, put some on. Do we have to? Dink said. Yes, what happens if the burglar sees your two white faces glowing in the moonlight? Dink poured some of the polish into his hand and smeared it all over his face. This stuff stinks, he muttered. Josh did the same. I feel like Rambo, he said. Dink saw Josh's white teeth gleaming. Let's head out, Ruth Rose said, slipping away from the tent. The boys followed her down Woody Street. Miss Davis's house was dark as they crept into the backyard. Dink tried not to think about what they were doing. Ruth Rose chose their hiding place, a shadowy patch between two thick bushes behind the house. The moon was almost full, but large clouds kept slipping in front of it. The kids wiggled around, getting comfortable on the lawn. Did you bring the cookies? Josh asked. Yes, but let's save them till later, Ruth Rose said. We might be here for hours. Josh let out a big sigh. <sighs> People who break their promises. She's right, Josh. Dink whispered, and I don't think we should talk anymore. If the burglar comes, he might hear us and take off. Five seconds passed. One little cookie wouldn't kill you, Ruth Rose. Josh, this is a stakeout, not Ellie's diner. Cops eat on stakeouts. Josh, shh. Dink stretched out on the grass. He watched the back of the house for moving shadows. Nothing moved. He slapped at a mosquito. A white cat strolled through the yard. Dink yawned. Every few minutes he checked his watch. He closed his eyes. When he opened them again, it was nearly 11 o'clock. Josh was sound asleep, but Dink could see that Ruth Rose's eyes were wide open. Are you hungry? She whispered. He nodded and shook Josh's shoulder. Ruth Rose opened her pack. She brought out a bag of cookies, three bananas, and three cartons of apple juice. They ate in silence, listening, 
and watching for a burglar to show up. Thanks, Ruth Rose, Josh whispered. Then he lay back down and shut his eyes again. Dink yawned and tried to get comfortable. He wished he'd brought his sleeping bag. It was soft and suddenly he saw something move in the shadows next to the house. He shook Josh and put his mouth next to Ruth Rose's ear. Look, he whispered, pointing. But whatever he'd seen wasn't moving now. Dink trained his eyes on the back of the house. He saw only shadows of the trees and bushes. Then one of the shadows moved. Dink smelled Josh's cookie breath. He's here, Josh whispered. Dink could feel Josh trembling with excitement. Dink's stomach did a quick plunge. Someone dressed in dark clothes and a baseball cap was creeping behind Miss Davis's house. He carried a gym bag and a long pole. The prowler was in the shadows and Dink couldn't see his face. The burglar set his bag and the pole on the ground. Then he checked each first floor window on the back of the house. Finding them all locked, he walked around the side out of sight. What should we do? Josh said. Is he leaving? Dink shook his head. He left his stuff. Did anyone recognize his face? Ruth Rose asked. Nobody had. Suddenly the dark figure returned. He stood with his back to them, looking up at the house. Then the prowler turned around. He seemed to be looking directly at Dink. Dink was glad he'd blackened his face. Suddenly, Josh grabbed Dink's arm. It's the canary guy. Ruth Rose let out a gasp. Fred Little was walking right toward them. And I'm sorry to say, just as it's getting really good, we do have to stop for today because we are at the end of our chapter. So we've just read chapter six and seven. There is not going to be a quiz for six and seven. I'm just going to combine it all together. So you will get a quiz tomorrow for the whole book. Okay. And it'll probably be a little bit more extended because tomorrow we're going to read chapters eight and nine and finish the book. Okay. So today, all you had to do was listen to me, um, read the story and hopefully write down some really good notes.